This is about a game you might have never played. This is about a game you will never get to play. This is about a game you might have enjoyed. This was a game you deserved to try. This is a game that didn't deserve to die but was killed anyway. So why should you care about a game you will never play? Because this is about more than just this game. This is about the players who bought this game and many other games that you have bought or are considering buying. This is about consumers who will never get to use the product they paid for and that includes you, no matter which game you play. Let's talk about the game we began with, for if it won't get to live, it at least deserves to be discussed and remembered. We're talking about a game titled Space Junkies. This was a zero-gravity first-person shooter that allowed you to float up and down while moving sideways, forward and backward. You didn't need to exhaust any fuel to move, but you did have a recharging boost that you could activate to accelerate for a few seconds. You would have to move quick if you wanted to snag all the health and armor pickups after a close fight. The freedom of movement in this game was unparalleled and created an unrivaled degree of verticality in its gameplay. Some maps emphasized this more than others by showcasing the vast voids of outer space, while other maps stuck to traditional design by confining movement to claustrophobic caves and tunnels. This combination of convention and uniqueness was also present in the game's various modes. Space Junkies featured the traditional team deathmatch and free-for-all for players familiar with popular shooting games, but it also featured modes that weren't quite as common in this genre. For example, its one-shot, one-kill mode, Insta Blast, gave each player a pistol that would kill in one shot, and a shield that could absorb a single shot. This made for some very tense but exciting moments when you'd frantically try to aim at a distant player on the few parts that weren't protected by his shield before he could do the same to you. If this wasn't your cup of tea, you could try King Mode, where your team could compete with another team to control possession of a crown. If you wanted to try every weapon Space Junkies had to offer, you could play Final Cut, the game's take on gun game which granted you a heat-seeking missile launcher to begin with and exchanged it for a new weapon every time you killed another player. There was a lot of fun to be had in this game, but what made Space Junkies really special was its simplicity. It had no characters to unlock, no weapon attachments to grind for, it did not pander to any cause and it wasn't riddled with microtransactions. Space Junkies did not have a large arsenal, but the few weapons and gadgets it did have were distinct and differed significantly in their gameplay. If you equipped the decoy, you could inflate a stationary replica of your character model to momentarily confuse pursuers. Some weapons were more intuitive and familiar than others. The Bio Pump was a pump-action shotgun that would wreck targets at close range. The Solar Sword was a melee weapon that did even more damage but only at point-blank range. The Cosmic Ripper was a fully automatic minigun that excelled at medium-range engagements. The Slingshot was perhaps the most enjoyable weapon of them all firing explosive shells that packed a powerful punch, though they weren't quite as fast as the bullets fired from other weapons. The Bowminator was a bow that fired a spread of arrows and was a relatively tricky weapon compared to the others. The Ricochaker was a fully automatic sidearm that you could dual wield with little drawback. In fact, you could dual wield and combine most if not all of the weapons and gadgets the game had to offer. The best thing about this game was that it was just a game. It didn't try to be something it couldn't be. It wasn't a platform for political pandering or predatory microtransactions. You could occasionally get loot boxes, but these did not impact gameplay in any way. Its graphics weren't groundbreaking with technical effects, but its art style fit the theme and created the sterile atmosphere you'd expect in a game set in space. The audio design also played a huge role in this. The subdued sounds you'd hear while floating around reinforce this feeling that you're in the void, far from any service you could plant your feet on. There was little writing in Space Junkies, and you would only hear voice lines when the game was announcing the mode chosen, the weapon you were given, and at the game's conclusion if you won or lost the match. It may have sounded cheesy, but as a whole it was charming and it complemented the rest of the game's design. Space Junkies was just perfect as a package, and didn't feel like it needed anything more than what it had. It's a shame then that its maker has sentenced it to die. How did it come to this? To analyze its death, let's begin with its birth. Space Junkies was developed as a virtual reality title and was released for VR in March 2019. Ubisoft quickly realized that the VR market wasn't large enough to sustain Space Junkies and requiring a VR headset was limiting the potential player base by driving would-be players away. Ubisoft decided to ditch the VR requirement by creating a version that people could enjoy on a regular screen with a mouse and keyboard. 
This version would still have cross-play with the original game so VR users could play with the newcomers using keyboard and mouse. Ubisoft announced an open beta for this non-VR version between July 25th and the 7th of August 2019. This beta is what I played and where I recorded the footage you're watching right now. I quickly grew to enjoy this beta and began dreading August 7th, the day Ubisoft said they would end open access. I was presently surprised when I could continue to play the game on August 7th, August 8th and so on, well into the second and third weeks of August. Perhaps Ubisoft forgot to revoke beta access, or maybe they decided to keep it available to provide players for their VR buyers to play with. Ultimately though, that wasn't to be. No good thing lasts forever, because Ubisoft won't allow it. On 27th of August 2019, Ubisoft announced they were bringing the Space Junkies non-VR open beta to a close on Wednesday, August 28th at 9am UTC. While this is the end of our journey in terms of development of the game, the team is proud to have achieved what we have set out to do, create a fun and fast-paced competitive first-person shooter in VR. The game service will remain open and accessible to players who purchase the VR version of Space Junkies. That was a fucking lie. But more on that later. The current plan, however, is to not release the non-VR version of the game. So why end the beta? Ubisoft wasn't going to miss out on any revenue from non-VR gamers, but they were going to miss out on potential revenue from VR players if they heard there was no one to play the game with. The open beta was addressing this exact issue, and Ubisoft killed it anyway. It would have been so easy to do the right thing. Nothing. Just leave it be. But that was beyond Ubisoft. Ubisoft killed the life support that was keeping their game alive, and never bothered to explain why. The game's player base was left to dwindle and die. Three years later, Ubisoft is using this as a justification to shut the servers down for good. They care so little that they can't even be bothered to announce the end on the Space Junkies website. Instead, the Ubisoft website announced they'll be ending online functionality for a list of games that include absolute bangers like Splinter Cell Blacklist, Driver San Francisco, Far Cry 3, Assassin's Creed 3 and Brotherhood Multiplayer. This is why you should care. Sooner or later, they're going to kill a game that you do play. How could they justify this? Closing the online services for some older games. This game was three years old. How does that qualify as an older game now? Sorry, you were saying? Closing the online services for some older games allows us to focus our resources on delivering great experiences for players who are playing newer and more popular titles. Now, piss off Ubisoft. You have billions of dollars. You don't need to deprive your consumers of products they've paid you for. This is not an exaggeration. This is what Ubisoft says about the fate that awaits Space Junkies. As a multiplayer-only title, you'll be unable to play the game going forward. How in the world is this acceptable? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. If you like this video, please press the like button and share it too, because YouTube won't. And now a brief update on the channel. Due to ongoing issues, upload frequency will be noticeably decreased. If you held off on ringing the bell for fear of notification spam, this channel won't contribute to the problem.